All right. Uh, well, we're just joined by our great friend, uh, Bobby Connor, uh, who is uh, with us here. I think you're down in Moravian Falls, you said. So. Down in Moravian Falls, North Carolina. God Bobby. bless you. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Thanks so much for being with us, Bobby. Um, you know, obviously, we're, we're in a really unique time. And, yes. uh, you know, we have this virus that's really shut down so much of Canada, obviously, the U.S. as well. Oh, man. Uh, and, uh, you know, I know that for you, well, maybe take us back because I know for you, you do this shepherd's rod. Shepherd's rod. Well, the Day of Atonement for the past 25 years, uh, you have a visitation of the Lord Jesus. He'll tell me some of the things that's going to happen in the future. And uh, this is a shepherd's rod right here for 2020. And uh, in this, in chapter three, I talk about this. I talk about uh, diseases. Uh, let, I'll just read a little bit of it if it's okay with you, because we, we, you write it a year in advance. This is chapter three, and it's uh, on page 83. Uh, a shakeup to create a wake up. And, and we talk about God's going to bring a mighty shakeup, and part of the shakeup is going to be uh, infectious diseases. I'll just read it to you. The, the, the magic, uh, let me find where it's at here. And it says, All the foundations, anything that can be shaken, will be shaken. And it says, There will be mighty and violent earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilence, plagues, malignant and contagious or infectious epidemic diseases, which are deadly and devastating. See, we wrote this back in September. And uh, I want you to know something God won't do a single thing on planet Earth without first revealing what He's going to do to His servants and prophets. But the key is this. This shakeup is for wake up. And I believe that God's going to give us a time to realign ourselves with him. I think we've got too busy on trivial things, on things that really don't matter. And now we see sports sport events shut down, Hollywood shut down, a whole bunch of entertainment things shut down. And now it's going to give us a time to where we can really focus on the Lord, I think. Uh, Psalms 46, 10, 11 says, be still and know that I'm God. So we've had a real problem being still. So God's helping us to be still. He's helping us to how to uh, reevaluate our things that are really important in our lives. Family's important. People are important. And I'll tell you what, I'm so thankful. The Bible said, this is the day the Lord has made. I am going to rejoice and be glad in it. But I want to, I want to inspire the people because listen, the Lord said in this, in this shepherd's right, he said, it's not to hurt us, but to help us, to help us to get back to what's really meaningful in our life. And that's the Lord. And we've got to put him first. Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek ye first. And we've kind of neglected that. And God's going to help us to get back. And it's going to be a time of recalibration for us and realignment. And it's going to be good in the long run. Come on. Yeah. No. And, and uh, so, you know, I think we're a lot of people, obviously not you, not the, you know, God was speaking to you about it. And you said September. A lot of people, I'd say, though, you know, could have been taken off guard by it. Oh, it, it came in, it, it came in, you know, uh, just almost stealth, you know. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, one of the things I think we need to do is just begin to really battle the thing with the blood of Jesus. Because I know this, uh, it, it can really be turned back because he says, no weapon formed against us works. And it says, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. And it says, here's a great thing in Psalms 91 10, no evil will come near our dwelling. And we need to start living out of Psalms 27. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked come up to eat at my flesh, they stumble and fall. Though a whole army should encamp around about me, I will not fear. This is what the devil's trying to do, is call a, cause a pandemic of fear, honestly. Paranoia and fear. But God says fear not. 360-something times in the Bible it says fear not. Let not your hearts be troubled. Jesus is saying to us, come to me. All you that labor and heavy laden, take my yoke upon you. Learn to me, I'm meek and lowly in the heart. See, it's easy to quote those verses, but hard to do it. Because we look, man, here in America, a lot of the jobs have shut down, and I'm sure it's that way in Canada and other parts of the country. But uh, God's going to see us through it. He's our resource. He named himself El Shaddai, the God that does for you what you can't do for yourself. So I don't want the people to despair. Hosea 2, in it, Hosea 2.15 says, he will give us a pathway of hope right in the middle of the valley of despair. A pathway of hope, a doorway of hope. And that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to steal our hope. But I want, to, I want to inspire you and your church and your congregation in Canada and the whole world. The Bible says this, Hebrews 10, 35, do not 
fling away, throw away your steadfast confidence in God, your hope, because your steadfast confidence in God, your hope brings with it a great recompense of reward. I said, God, give me that in Texican where I can tell the people what it really means. He said, tell the people, hang on to hope. It pays big dividends. Hope pays big dividends. So the devil knows that. So he's going to do everything he can to chip away and get us to give up on our hope, give up on our dreams, give up on our aspirations. Let's don't do it. Because right in the middle of the valley of trouble, there'll be a pathway, a doorway of hope. And God's going to show us how to really trust in the Lord. And uh, I'll tell you what I think we're going to do. I think God's going to do uh, with us uh, in, in our attitude and our reactions what he did with Job. Job finally said, oh, Lord, even though you slay me, I'm going to praise you. Look at Paul and Silas in prison at midnight, beat up, locked up, but they wouldn't shut up. It said they prayed and saying praises unto God. And watch this, and the prisoners heard them. When we respond uh, to adversity in a positive way, the whole world watches. And that's what the church has got to do. This is going to be our time to stand up. It's Isaiah, what, 60? Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has been revealed upon you. Deep, dense darkness will cover the nations. That's what's happening. But God's glory and his light is going to shine upon us. So I'm just yakking on, but you, you ask any question you want to, brother. Well, yeah, I, I really appreciate what you're saying. And, you know, I think for, for us, we're, we're encouraging people and our body, you know, just don't, you know, don't give any place in your heart to fear and just yes. keep your eyes on the Lord. And, you know, this is going to pass. We're going to walk through this. And, you know, our community is going to walk through this, our province, yeah. um, you know, and, and Canada. And, you know, I know obviously you're in the States right now, uh, but, I, I was just going to ask you, you know, just prophetically over Canada, like, are you feeling anything about Canada that the Lord's been showing you? I, I tell you what, I love Canada. I've spent, I spend a lot of time up there. I remember I told you one time I, I, I come in and out of the border so much. Uh, one of the border agents stopped me and said with a very kind of a, uh, authoritative force, what are you doing coming in and out of Canada so many times? I said to him, do you really want to know the truth? He goes, yes, I do. I said, I said I'm going in and out of Canada because God wants to stimulate y'all to have a roaring, raging revival. And guess what he said? He said to me, see that you get it done. I love Canada. We spend a lot of time uh, in and out of Canada because God has a great plan for Canada. He really does. And one of your number one calls is to pray for Israel. A, a big angel followed me from Israel to Canada. The last time I saw him, he was in a uh, in a uh, Italian eating joint in Hamilton, Ontario, but he's there, a watcher angel, and he's there to stir up the Canadians to pray for the peace of uh, Jerusalem, and that's one of y'all's number one calls, and I know that y'all's ministry has a good tie-in with Israel, but uh, listen, God has really, really given us these days to seek him while he may be found, to call upon him while he's near, but the Canadian people, I, we love them. I, I love their resolve. And so one thing that has always amazed me is your camp meetings. You know, these people will come and I don't know how many days they stay, but that's a great thing to have a community like that where people can come together. They know they're going to be inspired. They know they're going to have a uh, covenant fellowship with people. And I love that. That's a great thing. Uh, be kind of hard in America, I think, to get people to give up a couple of weeks to come to go to church. But these Canadians, they'll do it. And uh, I love being part of that. I really do. So I'll be glad when it cranks back up and gets everything going. Well, we, you know, we're hoping you're coming this summer for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, and I guess a couple of things I wanted to ask you too about Israel, but also just while we're on the, the timelines of this, like, has the Lord showed you anything in terms of a timeline, you know, for, for this virus and kind of where it might peak or, you know, even, you know, our job is, as the church to pray, does that affect some of these things? I think so. I think that we can alter the timeline by our urgency of prayer. And it says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. There is a real important turn from their wicked ways. Then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. And it rests upon us whether or not we're going to get urgent about our prayers. And uh, uh, President Trump's call for a national day of prayer. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, if one can chase a thousand, two can chase 10,000. And so uh, it's good to get your people together, even on uh, hookups like this and spend time praying and God will hear us. And uh, he said he's a very present help in the time of trouble. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I, uh, 
God really, really, really wants us to seek him like we've not, not been able to do lately because of all the trivial things. And it, I think maybe you might have the shepherd drug, but in that third chapter, we talk about how that God loves us too much to trip over these trivial things and uh, these little things that doesn't, doesn't have any real uh, consequences to it. God wants us to see ourselves as who we really are. We're world changers. We really are. God has put us here in these most strategic times in human history. Now's the time to stand up and realize who you are. And I looked at it again this morning. Your, your Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make man in our own image and let's give them kingdom control. And that's what the devil's been trying to say to the body of Christ. Oh, you don't have any power. You don't have any purpose. He's lying to you because he sees these consummation of the ages. He sees this coming to the end and he realizes the real power on earth is the Christians. And so God's going, the devil's going to do everything he can to get us discouraged. God's going to do everything he within us to inspire us to stand up. Remember young David said, is there not a cause? He came up there and Goliath was roaring and rumbling. And the, it says the armies of Israel, when it says when they heard him, they trembled. When they saw him, they fled. This is the armies of God. And they fled. And here comes this little shepherd's boy. Said he was ruddy in complexion. Hadn't even reached puberty. And there's this giant roaring. And he, David looked around and says, is there not a cause? And I think that pastors and leaders in the nations are going to have to say, isn't there a cause? Isn't there a cause to rally? Isn't there a cause to come together? Isn't there a cause to really seek the Lord and to extract all of the things that are, are trivial out of our life and really get down to business? And I'll tell you the happiest, we're going to come through this thing and we're going to come through it better and we're going to come through it with a new appreciation for who we are because we'll know who he is. It says in the book of uh, Job, acquaint now thyself with God and be peace and good will come unto thee. But here's what the whole thing is right now. The devil's trying to get us to gaze, to gaze at the, the, the problem and glance at the solution. We've got to start gazing at the solution, God, and we've got to start glancing at the problem. We don't, we don't act like there's no problem there. We look at it, we understand that, but the main for, force of our focus needs to be upon him and inspire your people to do Isaiah 26, 3, that will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee. Trust in the Lord Jehovah and you will be saved. And so anyway, uh, uh, we love you guys and I love Canada. You asked what Canada's part was. A mighty raging revival is going to start in Canada. Biggest healing revival we've seen in the world. And I'm telling you, it's nearer now than what we've ever believed. Wow. See, when sickness comes in, God says, like a flood, I'll raise up a standard against him. And so I know it's going to start all the way over on the, uh, by, by Hamilton, Ontario, spring over there, and then going to end up all the way over here on the other side Come of on. Canada. It'll be wow. the largest healing revival we've seen in our, it'll be the fruit of the seeds of John G. Lake. I'm absolutely sure of it. Come on. Well, I, I, uh, I believe that. And uh, yeah. yeah, and you know, I think just what you're saying, you know, God wants, really just wants us to see what, what he's seen in the, yeah. in, in, the, in the midst of this. And, you know, I wanted to throw some love too at uh, Trump. You know, uh, I heard yeah. him, I think yesterday saying, you know, he hopes to have this, you know, kind of contained by Easter and have Easter. churches filled on Easter. I don't know if you heard that, but I love that. And yeah. um, I thought that was amazing. I wanted to ask you to, you know, uh, just getting to, you know, Bob Jones, like Bob Jones had a word uh, years ago about when the Kansas City Chiefs won yes. the Super Bowl. And yes. I have to look at this again, but, you know, basically that revival would begin to take place. I don't know if it was the billion soul harvest revival that he spoke of. Yeah. Here's what he, here's what he said. He said, when the Kansas city chiefs win the super bowl, it'll be a mighty move of God come to the earth and God will begin to set in his chief apostles. And see that that's good. And that's a real good thing because if we don't have godly government in place, when the harvest comes, we'll have chaos. And so, uh, I was really, really encouraged uh, by that because that's what Bob said. He said, when the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl, it'll, it'll be a mighty move of God come to earth and God will set in the chief apostles. And we need that functioning fivefold. And I wrote a book about the emerging apostolic. And for a long time, uh, I think we had a wrong concept of the apostolic. We thought it was who's, who, who you over is who you under. Yeah, the apostolic is going to be under the body of Christ, picking them up to the Lord, not over them. And so I drew for the apostolic people, I drew a pyramid, you know, and I rotated the pyramid. It's we're lifting them up to God. We're not over them, lording over them. Wow. Yeah. You know, and it's, I think that's really actually an interesting word. 
uh, for now, because you know how the enemy will come and try to stop what God wants to do yeah. before it starts. You know, yeah. we see that all throughout the Bible. Yeah. And, you know, even when you're talking about the apostolic and, you know, you look at this virus and how it's been, you know, trying to attack even our older generation yeah. and how, you know, maybe even in a way God is, you know, that's a generation that God really wants to powerfully use and the enemy's trying you're to stop exactly it. right. Okay. All right. You're exactly right. And uh, that, that's, we had that visitation from the Lord when he said, I'm going to join the millennials with the senior saints, and it's going to be an unstoppable league. He said, I'm making a yoke for the end time harvest. I'm joining zeal and wisdom together. So I think it's pretty uh, ironic that the devil's using, you know, the young people sometimes. They don't understand the urgency of the hour. And, uh, but anyway, uh, I think the devil saw and heard those prophecies about God joining this zeal and zeal and wisdom together as an end time harvest yoke. And so he's going to do everything he can to separate them. But God had told me, he said, encourage the senior saints because the move of God will come upon them in such a dimension that the millennials will beat a path to sit at their feet and drink in the word of God. In the book of Psalms, it says, one generation will laud and applaud the mighty deeds of God to the coming generation, convincing them God is everything he says he is. And aren't you glad? And I'm telling you, I'm watching that happen uh, with some of these senior saints. There's fresh fire in them. There's a sparkle in their eye. And I'm telling you what, I, I wouldn't trade these times for any other time in history to be alive, honestly. These are the most crucial time in human history. This is. And we, we need to stand up and be who we are. And don't be afraid to bind things, loose things, because we, we're going to forge the future with our words. And the Bible said, decree a thing, and what you decree will be established. And so, but, but see, the devil go, oh, no, I wouldn't go out on a limb. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll go out on a limb and hand him a saw. You know what I mean? Because, listen, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of, uh, uh, just believe that God's going to use you in a mighty way, use your people. I'm, I'm so thrilled about uh, guys and gals your age. I, I remember, I, I'll just, years ago, remember, I'd look at you and I'd say, Johnny, one day you'll be, taking over this whole thing. And I could feel people going, oh man, but see, it's here. Yeah. And see, but boy, this is a, this is a time to rise and shine. And there's a, a verse in Isaiah, it's Isaiah 21 verse five. It says, tell the young princes to arise and all the shields. And the number one shield we need to oil right now is the shield of faith by which we can quench all the fiery arrows of the evil one. Arise and anoint your shields. And so that's a good thing to do. Spend this time uh, just not looking at all the chaos, listening to all the the jargon on TV. Get with the Lord and find out what he says. And he, he'll tell you, you're going to come through this thing, and you're going to come through with a high hand. Every time God delivers his people, they come out with a high hand. And it says they, he, they spoil the Egyptians. Everything the devil means for bad, God's going to turn for good. And he will restore and tell you people not to grow weary in well-doing. They'll reap if they think not. The thing for this year's shepherd's rod, God said, I want you to teach my people how to soar above the chaos and the confusion of earth and walk on the wings of the wind. And uh, that's what the whole thing was about. And we can do that. We can get above the chaos. Bob Jones used to say we need to teach the people of God to walk above the snake line. On a mountain, you can get so high till uh, uh, the the, the altitude will not allow a snake to live there. And so we need to live in such a high level till uh, we're above all the demonic activity. Oh, wow. So I think, you know, kind of recapping that a little bit, you know, what the church should be doing is, is just standing in faith and proclaiming what yes. God says about this situation. That's exactly right. Find those verses of victory. I'll not leave you. I'll not forsake you. I'm a very present help. And just fire that back. Fire it into the people of God. It'd be like throwing coal in these old steam engines, you know, mm -hmm. because, uh, listen, that, it's, that, that those promises of God are powerful to, for us to be productive here in these days. And don't forget the things of God, you know, and that's what we've got to do. Uh, there's, in, it says in the book of Hosea, God will allure us, the church, out into the wilderness, and there he'll win us back with words of love and comfort. And so he's going to show us how much he loves us. He loves us too much to let us trip over trivial things. Yeah. Now, okay, the last thing I wanted to ask you uh, as well was just, you know, from an economic standpoint, you know, obviously we as a, like there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of people getting laid off, a lot of uncertainty, uh, you know, all the restaurants are closed here, you know, all the gyms, all the schools, there's, there's a ton of unemployment, there's a ton of uncertainty, 
And, you know, obviously same in the United States, the markets have been in mm -hmm. turmoil. Um, from an economic standpoint, what has the Lord showed you anything? Yeah, God will get us through it. He really, really will. Uh, he, he named himself El Shaddai, the God that does for us what you, that we can't do for ourselves. And he means that, the God that can make the impossible possible. And you look at Wall Street, you look at NASDAQ, you look at all these markets and all that, they're up and down like this, but God is constant. And one of the first themes in the shepherd's rod was we've got to build a firm foundation. We've got to realize when the winds come, the rains fall, if we build up on the rock, we're going to be standing. And uh, that's what we've got to do. Make sure the people are firmly footed on the things of God. And then no matter what happens, the Bible tells us all things work together for good. And But the, for the economic thing, hang on and do all we can to help those that really, really need it. And uh, our president has stepped uh, up across, uh, stepped up really uh, with the stimulus package to keep from uh, unraveling the whole economic uh, things. He's uh, having them pay the people because they can't come to work. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Oh, it's awesome. Because most of the time they go, well, if they ain't no work, they're not going to get paid. But they made a stimulus package of several trillion dollars so that they'd have money to pay the workers that could stay isolated at home. And, uh, but that's one of his expertise is his economics. And so uh, if they'll leave him alone and let him just, uh, yep. when we come through this thing, it'll come back strong. And I think it'll come back strong for all the nations, honestly. Well, that's, that's an encouraging word. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of people are going to, Appreciate that. Um, okay, well, just before we go then, Bobby, is there anything else that you want to say to say to us or anything on your heart? Just keep it up. Just do not grow weary in well-doing. And do that Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. It, it basically says, hey, didn't you get the message? God's not up there going, I never saw this coming. That's yeah. basically what it says. And it says, they that wait upon the Lord shall shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as of eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. The devil's doing everything he can to exhaust us. Just get us depleted and just where we'd faint. But we're going to reap because we're not going to faint. And God's going to show us that uh, he'll bring us through this thing. When you come through the water, through the fire, through the flood, you'll come into a wealthy place. It means a place of God's perfect provision for us. And right in the middle of the thing, you know, God got in there with Shadrach, Meshach, and the other kid. Remember that? Yeah. And so don't just teach your people and show them teach them by example and i'm so i'm i'm thankful for you and i'm thankful for your generation that they've got a call and a commission and one of the things that is so important now with young leaders is to teach the people purity you know teach these young champions purity and i use second Corinthians seven one having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us purify ourselves from every bit of the contamination of the flesh and of the spirit perfecting holiness in the reverential fear of god and that's what we got to do even in the midst of all of this we're going to we're going to say lord i love you so much i don't want to be contaminated i want to be clean and consecrated come and on. so we're going to move from contamination to consecration come on well, thank you so much, Bobby. Uh, God bless you. Thank you. I, I like all these new medias. I know absolutely nothing about it, but yep. uh, thank the Lord the, there's people that do. So it's a good way to yeah, well, visit. Listen, we love you guys. If we can help you anyway, let me know. Okay. Thank you so much. And thank uh, Carolyn and Christopher okay. for setting this up. Uh, yeah. Yes. Blessing to us. Thank the Lord. He can take over my computer and help me. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, well, thank you again. Okay. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you soon. Okay. God bless you, Johnny. God bless your ministry too. Thanks. Thank you.